Now we have uh, Mr. Davide Silvani from the Max Planck Institute of Plasma Physics in Germany. And their research focus has been on the I-mode power exhaust studies at the Aztec upgrade. So good morning, everyone. My name is Davide Silvani, and today I will show you some results of my PhD research, which is about I-mode pedestal relaxation events in the Aztec upgrade tokamak. But before jumping into the results, I would like to give you an introduction on why we are studying this and why this is relevant for fusion. So our goal is to achieve as much as, as much as possible fusion reaction. And to do that, we need to maximize the pressure and the energy confinement time. One way to do it is to build a pedestal in our edge region, which means to have steep gradients. And in this way, one can reach uh, high core pressures. And this is what is called usually H-mode confinement regimes. However, when you have two steep pedestal gradients, you can have some edge instabilities called edge localized modes, ELMS in short, that uh, decrease your, your profile shape. And then you have this energy which is expelled into the um, scrape of layer and reaches your divertor targets, enhancing the heat fluxes. And this is something that needs to be avoided in either and demo because for example, in either this will cause surface erosion and edge melting, as you can see here already in present day machines. And demo is for, for this reason looking for a scenario that has without type 1 ends. And for this reason, we are studying also the IMOD confinement regime, which is a scenario without any type 1 end and with a pedestal. So it has, as you can see here, a temperature pedestal in the plasma edge, but the density profile is like the one of Helmut. So there is no density pedestal. And in this way, we can reach high pressures without having type 1 ends. But how to achieve IMOD? So we can have two different configurations of our plasma, one called favorable, where this ion B grad B drift is pointing towards the X point, and another called unfavorable, when this ion B grad B drift is pointing away the X, uh, from the X point. And then if we put power into our uh, configuration, you can see that in the favorable configuration, at some point you will have a transition into H mode, uh, however, in the unfavorable configuration, you will at some point have a transition into the I mode, and then later at higher power, you will enter H mode. So in this way, we can achieve our I mode. Okay, so now everything is good. We have our, um, we know how to access I mode, but sometimes there can be some small pedestal relaxation events happening in the I mode. And an example has been, first of all, seen in the Alcatraz mode tokamak. And here you see the increase of, let's say, energy and particle in the endoscope of layer region. And this now we will refer to these events as our PREs in short. And in ASDEX, we are seeing that these events cause a relaxation of the density and temperature profile. As you can see here, in blue, you have the profile before, and in orange, you have the profile after, and you see that this reduce a bit. And this is also reflecting in the pressure. And then this energy goes out and reaches your divertor target. And so our main uh, research questions that I would like to ask and also answer into the, in, during this talk is are when are these PREs appearing? Because then we can avoid them. And if they are harmful for the divertor target in a reactor relevant scenario. So starting with the first question, we can have a look at this graph where on the Y axis, you have, a, you have the edge temperature, electron temperature on the y, and on the X axis, the edge density. And you have in light gray L mode data, in blue I mode data without these PREs, in orange the data of I mode with PREs, and in dark gray H mode data. And as you can see, first of all, most of your I mode of our I modes are blue, so without PREs. And then we start to observe these PREs only when we are approaching these four kilopascal isobarons, so when we are very close to the transition to H mode. So in Azex grade, we observe them only close to the H mode transition. Another interesting thing to look at is the confinement during these events. So the conf this is the energy confinement time uh, normalized by a scaling law. And as you can see, basically when you enter this, uh, when these events appear, you are not increasing your confinement. So this means basically that we can have IMOD plasmas without PREs and with high confinement as well. Now, if we want to understand the size of these events, we can have a look, for example, at the energy loss this delta W normalized by the total energy content of the plasma. And this is what we see here in this plot. This energy, relative energy loss is about 1%. And this is, as you can see, lower than type 1 ends. 
And the last quantity that we want to analyze is the energy fluence reaching the diverter targets. This is an important quantity because it needs to be compared with the material limits of our diverter. And this quantity is basically the heat flux reaching the diverter um, uh, integrated over time, so megajoule per square meter. And now if we want to introduce a simple model to predict this quantity, we, uh, one can assume that you, this energy, which is filled in this uh, tiny volume close to the pedestal, uh, reaches entirely the diverter target over this area. And if you do some simple calculation, you can find that this quantity is proportional to the pedestal top electron pressure and some intermaterial quantities. And now if you plot the data, so here you have on the y-axis the uh, measured data on the diverter and on the x-axis the model, you see that the PRE energy fluence is lower than that of type 1 amps that you see here in light gray. So in this respect, it seems it's um, there's a lower effect on, on the diverter. However, if we then do some extrapolations, we can use these two upper and lower boundary lines to make some projections, for example, to ARC, which is a demo-like reactor that is uh, thought to be built in the US. And you can, say, you can see that it could be possibly above the material limits, even if they are lower than type one amps. So to conclude, I've shown you that time mode PREs can appear close to the H mode transition, that they have a relative energy loss of more or less 1%, and that this peak energy fluence on the diverter is lower than type 1 amps, but still can be possibly an issue for material limits in a reactor. And if we want to draw some, some implication of all this, uh, as a grandmother would suggest, because in Italy, in our society, grandmothers are the wisest people in, in our society, uh, she would say, well, if you want to run a fusion reactor in IMOD, just run it with the IMOD not so close to the H1 transition, and this way you will have high confinement, and you will not have these events appearing. Thank you for your attention. Thank you very much, Davide. Indeed, a very enlightening talk.